Welcome to part one. Normally a starter set or quick start guide would be things I wouldn't comment on since there's little review material for them. However, I'll be doing so here because this was our first impression that many of us got with this new edition. For the purposes of this segment, I'll be going over how well it introduces itself to a potential player, be they new bloods or more experienced sorts. As such, I'll be skimming over the mechanics for this part, since that'll be covered in the three books. The contents of the starter set is as follows. A 32-page rulebook, an adventure called The Lost Mind of Fendelver, which takes characters from level 1 to level 5 at 64 pages, a basic set of dice, one of each sort, d4, d6, d8, d12, and d20, and a blank character sheet for participating in D&D Encounters events, which I won't cover here. The first thing that stuck out to me was the layout of the classes in the sheets. We have a rogue, a wizard, a cleric, and two fighters, one having a focus on ranged combat. This struck me as an odd choice, as if they were trying to stick with the basic four, but at the same time deviate since the races used aren't all the core four in the basic set PDF. I think they'd be better served by having a fighter and ranger instead of two fighters. The backside of it contains a blurb about the character's race, the character's background, and the benefits they get for the next few levels. Also, the benefits you gain from each are automatic, with the spells that the wizard and cleric characters get being the sole exception, given that they have more freedom to choose which spells to prepare. As a final note, each of the characters' backstory references Neverwinter in some way, and it will not be the last time the Forgotten Realms is referenced in the game. Keep that thought in the back of your mind as I continue. Much of the rulebook contains a skimmed-down version of things that would make later appearances in the player's handbook, so I'll not be going over the mechanical details in this book yet. I will note that spellcasting has its own chapter near the back, having the details of each spell for wizards and clerics. Personally, I think a set of cards would have better served for the spells, to prevent excessive amounts of referencing. And yes, I know about the spell cards that wizards recently put out. That's beyond the scope of this review. Shifting gears to the adventure mentioned earlier, its book is split into four parts, each detailing a different set of encounters and events along its story. Act 1 of the adventure entails the characters being attacked by goblins as they escort a wagon from Neverwinter to Fandalin. One item to note is how each player rolls a d20 plus the goblins plus 6 stealth modifier against passive perceptions. This strikes me as something the GM should do instead, rolling once and having the results compared against everyone else's roll. That said, the initial ambush is followed with the eventual interrogation and raid on a nearby goblin hideout, each area described briefly with an encounter therein. Act 2 is a more urban adventure, set in the town of Fandolin. Much of its early content is follow-up from the previous act, with a few side quests laid out here and there. Now, I am personally of the opinion that side quests don't work as well in the format of a tabletop game, unless you're really good at implementing them within the narrative and a lot of them here come off as ways to kill time until the DM wants to introduce the primary antagonist in the town, the Red Brand Ruffians. This eventually leads into a break-in on their hideout, with subsequent encounters and a map given. Act 3 is a wilderness adventure in the area outside of Fandolin, and as such introduces the concept of wilderness encounters, a random encounter roll done once per in-game day and night, with a roll of 17 to 20 starting an encounter. Much of the surrounding area has a few points of interest, but all the focus seems to be on the ruins of a town called Thunder Tree. The clues from these places eventually lead the party to Cragmaw Castle. Both Thunder Tree and Cragmaw have their own maps and encounters, and this is something I'll get to in a moment. The final act is one massive underground dungeon with many areas, twists, turns, and traps. Much of this is the conclusion to the events and players built up to this point of the adventure, and a map alongside with the encounters is presented. Overall, the adventure is presented and executed well when it comes to the fluff aspect and some of the side quests, but my primary problem is how they did the dungeons. The book itself provides a full-size map, but wants to instead describe each section within piece by piece. Normally I wouldn't make a fuss about this sort of thing, but a starter set is supposed to have everything you need to get, well, started. And thus having the DM come up with an improvised map kind of gets away from that. Additionally, I'm not too fond of the focus on having a longer series of encounters with smaller opponents. Having this sort of gauntlet can bog down the story's flow, in my opinion. After that, an appendix is presented for both magic items and the monsters in the adventure. I should take the time to note that I'm not fond of the mechanic where certain magic items have to be attuned first, and only up to three at a time. It comes off as an arbitrary way to limit one's magic items, 
despite the slots from previous games filling that role just fine. Judging the starter set as an introduction to the game, I don't think it quite succeeds at its job. D&D 5th Edition's take suffers a problem that a lot of similar starter sets and quick start guides do in assuming that the person running the game has a base knowledge and or experience working with tabletop gaming. Perhaps with some games you can get away with that, but given the popularity of D&D, I don't think that's the case. Furthermore, I think the game would have been better served with a few full-size maps, or putting some of the abilities on cards, especially for the magic classes. While it may have a slightly better adventure and higher level characters than the previous starter set I've purchased, 4th Edition Essentials, this one isn't quite as good at introducing the mechanics of 5th Edition to a new player and putting that burden solely on the likely new DM. In part 2, we'll look into the player's handbook. Let's bring some popcorn for this one.